To Americans, their national flag embodies the qualities America was founded on. Liberty, justice, freedom, national purpose, and love of their country. It is a source of pride and unity for Americans who pledge allegiance to the flag and sing about their star-spangled banner in their national anthem. But how did the stars and stripes become the symbol of the United States of America? And why is it so intrinsic to American culture? Join us as we retell the true story of the American flag. When Europeans began to colonize America, they jostled for land and supremacy amongst themselves, displacing the native population. By the 1700s, the British had 13 successful colonies. Connecticut, Delaware, Georgia, Maryland, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, New York, New Jersey, Virginia, North and South Carolina, Pennsylvania, and Rhode Island. These 13 colonies began the American Revolution, winning themselves political independence and inspiring the Spanish colonies to do the same. Before the American Revolution, colonies usually flew some variant of the European national or royal flag that represented the origin of the colony. Even during the war, the revolutionaries didn't unite under one flag, but all fought under individual flags representing their unit or regiment. A popular early Union flag was flown by the Sons of Liberty in 1765 and had nine red and white stripes. Another was a depiction of a coiled rattlesnake with the words, Don't Tread on Me or Liberty or Death emblazoned on it. At the Second Continental Congress in Philadelphia in 1775, a new fighting force called the Continental Army was formed. Legend has it that George Washington ordered a new flag, the Continental Colors, to be raised during a siege of British-occupied Boston on New Year's Day, 1776. But some now think that they were more likely to have raised the British Union Jack. Nevertheless, the Continental Colors, also known as the Grand Union Flag, the Cambridge Flag, the Somerville Flag, or the Union Flag, comprised 13 horizontal stripes with a small Union Jack in the top left-hand corner. The stripes probably alternated red and white, although some suggest they were red, white, and blue. The flag's design was a compromise between those who wanted to renegotiate their relationship with the British monarchy and those who sought to sever ties altogether. Why this color scheme was chosen is debated, with some asserting that white signifies purity and innocence, red denotes hardiness and valor, and blue indicates vigilance, perseverance, and justice. Flag expert Mike Buss disagrees and feels there was a more practical and obvious reason for the color choice. They just copied the colors of the British Union Jack. By 1777, Washington reconsidered the addition of the Union Jack, realizing that including the national flag of their enemy probably wasn't a good idea. After seeking an alliance with France, the Second Continental Congress passed a resolution stating that the flag of the United States be 13 stripes alternate red and white. They also decreed the Union be 13 stars, white in a blue field, representing a new constellation. The layout of the stars was left to the imagination of the flagmakers, who each made their own pattern. The most prominent design had the stars arranged in a ring, which was probably the suggestion of Congressman Francis Hopkinson, who was most likely the flag's designer. A legend attached to this design, commonly known as the Betsy Ross flag, was started by Betsy's grandson, William Canby, who claimed that Washington had asked the seamstress and flagmaker to help design and sew the new U.S. flag. Can be asserted that Washington had changed the stars from six-pointed to five-pointed on Betsy's suggestion, and that she had decided to sew the stars in a circle. Although this tale is well known in the United States, there is no objective evidence to support it other than Canby's insistence that the story was passed down in the family. Other flag makers set the stars out in rows, most often 454 or 32323, although other variations did exist. The American flag was now officially the Stars and Stripes, and the Battle of Brandywine on September 11, 1777 is usually cited as the first time it formed part of the military colors. The flag changed again on May 1, 1795, when Congress added a mandate, the Second Flag Resolution, which held that a new star and new stripe should be added when new states were admitted to the Union. Vermont joined in 1791, followed by Kentucky in 1792 raising the number of states in the Union to 15. In 1812, Major George Armistead commissioned a flagmaker named Mary Young Pickerskill 
to make a flag so large that the British would have no difficulty seeing it from a distance. The flag was known as the Great Garrison Flag and was flown at Fort McHenry. It measured 30 feet by 42 feet and featured 15 stripes and 15 stars, representing the original 13 colonies plus the two new additions. The stars were arranged in five rows of three, and each stripe was two feet wide and two feet in diameter. The huge flag was too big for the small rooms of Pickersgill's house, and her daughter later described, The flag being so very large, Mother was obliged to obtain permission from the proprietors of Claggett's Brewery, which was in her neighborhood, to spread it out in their malt house, and I remember seeing my mother down on the floor placing the stars. Pickersgill worked with four teenagers to complete the flag. Her daughter Caroline, her nieces Eliza and Margaret Young, and an African-American indentured servant named Grace Wisher. The small group spent seven weeks stitching the flag, and according to Caroline, my mother worked many nights until 12 o'clock to complete it in the given time. The huge flag was installed at Fort McHenry in August 1813, and Caroline also described how her mother helped with the installation. After the completion of the flag, she superintended the topping of it, having fastened in the most secure manner to prevent its being torn away by cannonballs. The wisdom of her precaution was shown during the engagement, many shots piercing it, but it remained firm to the staff. The engagement that Caroline spoke of was an attack by British warships on September 12, 1814, Mary Pickersgill's good sense in tightly securing the flag inspired the poet Francis Scott Key, who was held on a British ship during the attack, to write his famous poem, Defense of Fort Mahenry. The poem was later set to music and retitled The Star-Spangled Banner, with a portion of it becoming the American National Anthem in 1931. While 15 stripes were manageable, by 1818, five more states had joined the Union, causing Congress to enact the third and final flag resolution. This resolution held that the number of stripes would not increase and that they should number 13 to denote the original number of states in the Union. They also decreed that the number of stars would match the number of states in the Union, with a new star being added on July 4th after the state's admission. Although the American flag was clearly important, it was reserved for military affairs and was not flown by individuals. The cult of the flag didn't really take off until the U.S. Civil War in 1861. The first official battle of the Civil War ended when the Confederates took Fort Sumter in April 1861. The North quickly embraced the Stars and Stripes, which became a popular symbol of the cause. American journalist and historian Mark Leapson states, It has been said that when the flag came down in Fort Sumter, it went up everywhere in the North, almost like magic. In 1870, Betsy Ross's grandson came forward with a legend that gave an element of humanity to the creation of the flag and put it in the hands of the everyday people. In 1897, the government adopted the first state flag desecration statutes after a flag protection movement formed during what they perceived as commercial and political misuse of the flag. The symbol of the American flag had reached the hearts of so many Americans that in 1885, a Wisconsin teacher named Bernard Sigrin suggested a yearly celebration of the 1777 approval of the first U.S. flag design. Now known as Flag Day, the first annual celebration was held on June 14, 1877, marking 100 years since the adoption of the American flag. In the 1890s, the Youth's Companion Circulation magazine developed a marketing gimmick that offered a U.S. flag to readers who sold subscriptions. They ran the promotion just before the 400th anniversary of Christopher Columbus's voyage, and the magazine promised to raise old glory over every public school from the Atlantic to the Pacific. To accompany the flag, they offered an oath to aid in the children's participation in raising the flags. It was written by a former Baptist teacher named Francis Bellamy, a passionate socialist, who hoped the flag would ensure that the distinctive principles of true Americanism will not perish as long as free public education endures. On October 21, 1892, school children first took to their feet to recite, I pledge allegiance to my flag and to the republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. The pledge was quickly adopted, and by World War II, most public schools mandated a morning recitation. The addition of Under God didn't make it into the pledge until 1954, when Congress wanted to distance America from what they labeled as godless communism. Although many were unhappy with this addition, it was argued that it did not violate the constitutional separation of church and state 
as it was only ceremonial deism. Despite the clear passion for the American flag, the layout was still varied until 1912, with different flag makers proportioning the elements differently and the stars having either five, six, or eight points. President Howard Taft standardized the design and layout of the flag, signing an executive order that clarified what it should look like. Then, in 1934, Franklin Roosevelt's administration set the exact shades of red, white, and blue. It is clear that the American flag is more than just a cultural identifier. It represents the struggle to form a national identity and unite America under one government. The road has not always been easy for America, but from their bid for independence until the present day, their star-spangled banner has continued to wave. A survey in 2022 found that 70% of Americans saw the act of flying the American flag as patriotic, and 60% said the same about wearing an American flag pin. The survey also found that Americans still had an overwhelmingly positive response to the modern American flag. In contrast, every other symbolic flag in America, including the Black Lives Matter flag, the Gay Pride flag, the Trump 2024 flag, and the Confederate flag, generated a positive reaction of less than 50%. Today, as America, and indeed the rest of the world, seems locked in the ever-increasing divide between right-wing and left-wing politics, the American flag is caught in the crossfire. On one side, the flag represents the ideals of liberty and freedom. On the other, it symbolizes nationalism and white Western culture. Whether these two ideas can ever be reconciled is yet to be seen. But at least for now, the red, white, and blue still stands for the Republic of America. One nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about American history, check out our book, The History of the United States, a captivating guide to American history, including events such as the American Revolution, French and Indian War, Boston Tea Party, Pearl Harbor, and the Gulf War. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.